Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. In this episode of Beginner Basics, I'm going to talk about the differences between 223 and 556. Now, I have been asked this previously on my Q&A series and I've answered it a couple of times, but since I've started doing the Calibre reviews under the Beginner series, a few of you have asked about, you know, well, what is the difference between 223 and 556? So in these series, guys, I'm not going to waffle on for too long. I'm just going to get straight to the point and hopefully give you an understanding of, uh, you know, what I'm talking about here. Okay, so let's have a look here. We've got the uh, 223 and we've got the 556. So dimensionally, you know, they look the same, don't they, apart from the different projectiles. So this one here is loaded with a 55 grain Horndy VMAX. And this one here, the 5.56, is loaded with a uh, 69 grain Sierra Match King. Okay, so um, to look at them, pretty much the same. Now, what is the actual difference between the two of them? The 5.56 has a thicker wall to handle the higher pressures of the 5.56. So the big difference and what's really important is the pressure. Now, if you've got a firearm that's chambered in uh, 223, the throat area is actually um, well, half the length really of the uh, 5.56. So where you've actually got uh, in your chamber there, naturally you're going to have in front of it an area there called the throat, which is before you start hitting uh, the rifling of the barrel there. Now uh, 0.085 of an inch is the length there for 223, or 0.162 of an inch for 5.56. So you know, the throat is, as I say, almost two times um, longer on 5.56. So how does that make a difference? Well, what you need to do is you have to look at the actual PSI um, chamber pressure that's uh, given for 223 and 556. So 223 is 55,000 PSI and 556 is 58,000 PSI. Okay, so just looking at those numbers there, you would, um, you know, say to yourself, well, yeah, I'm not going to use a 5.56 in a 223 because there's more pressure. Okay, that also goes a step further. So if you're using 5.56 in a 223 chambered rifle, there is a risk that that projectile will be resting on the rifling, as you need to have a little bit of throat, you know, to be able to handle the expansion and pressure of that uh, round going off. So what it will actually do is you can substantially increase the pressure up to 65,000 PSI by doing that, okay? By using 5.56 ammo in a 223. So what's the uh, reality of that? Look, you might get a split case, you might get a uh, ruptured uh, primer, or worst case scenario, your action is gonna blow up. Uh, you're gonna have uh, some big problems there and possibly injure or even worse to yourself. Now, SAMI, okay, which is the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, they give guidelines um, you know, on obviously different calibers and their different specs there, and they recommend that you don't do it. Okay, So me personally, guys, I wouldn't do it. I know there's a lot of gun shops around that um, you know, are selling 5.56 ammo, and they're advising that it's fine to use you know, in a 223 chambered rifle. Um, look, my view is I disagree with that because of the specs um, and the pure facts given from places like Sammy and other gunsmiths and so forth that really know what they're talking about here. And you are increasing that pressure substantially. So for me personally, like, you know, if I had a really nice rifle, like, do I really want to uh, be putting 5.56 ammo in it just to save a couple of dollars? because um, you know, it's on sale uh, with risking obviously damage to that rifle. So you know, I wouldn't wanna do it myself personally. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of guys out there who have, but look guys, at the end of the day, I wouldn't, and that's my uh, firm belief on it.